this. The uncontrolled development of high-rise apartments in Kilimani, Kilaleshwa, and Lavington areas of Nairobi is now putting a strain on the available amenities and utilities, leading to burst sewers, pipes, perennial water shortages, and yes, traffic gridlocks. Well, as residential associations decry the transformation of their neighborhoods into what they describe as vertical slums, Nairobi Governor Johnson Sakaja says that his government is in court battling close to 800 developers who either moved onto construction sites without approval, developed beyond the approved structures, or simply ignored county disapprovals to continue constructing apartments. Hassan Mugambi now reports. The Kilimani and Kileleshwa neighborhoods of Nairobi County used to be prestigious addresses with bungalows and marshonets dotting the landscape. But the one-time leafy suburbs are now slowly transforming into concrete jungles of high-rise apartment blocks. Initially categorized as Zone 4 by the Nairobi City Council, no building permits here were granted beyond the four-floor limit. This is, however, no longer the case, with some apartments now scaling up to 15 floors towering over those who had initially complied with the city bylaws. Greedy developers who are finding their way, coming up within this area, coming up with structures which we've never seen. And as I sit here, I'm even challenging some of the agencies. Like for instance, we have the AK, we have the Planning Association of Kenya. I think it's high time they stamp the authority. And more so, also the governor of Nairobi. Along Kindaruma Road, for instance, a developer has packed an entire block comprising 900 bedsitters, studios and one-bedroom apartments onto a one-acre piece of land. What does that mean? In terms of density, the sewer which was designed over 50 years ago, the water pipe which was laid about 50 years ago, the road network like about this Kidaruma Road, if I may talk about the Kidaruma Road, it is actually destined for expansion. In December 2021, the Nairobi Metropolitan Services NMS withdrew an approval that had been granted to the developer and stopped the firm from making further variations to the property after the local residents association complained. In this letter to the developer, the director of planning and urban development said its officers visited the site and established that the building plans were not properly drawn. It reads in part, and I quote, 870 units on a 0 0.463 hectares are not acceptable since they exceed the ratio provided. Setback on basement is not observed and the traffic management report was not provided. But the developer allegedly disregarded the warning and construction continued. The developer through their project manager, adding that there are no studio apartments. This letter, part of correspondence the developer has had with the Nairobi County, issued new approvals which superseded the disapproved levels following complaints by residents. The developer further says there is no functional policy for Nairobi, adding that in the last 10 years, none of the projects approved adhered to the policy set by the now defunct Nairobi City Council. This trend is now putting pressure on available infrastructure, causing, among other problems, a serious water shortage. Though some of the new developers are able to sink their own boreholes, the residents say they still tap from the existing water infrastructure and further inconveniencing earlier settlers who may not be able to sink boreholes for their single units. There's been a serious water shortage. We have tried to reach out to Nairobi Water, we've tried to reach out to different agencies, but for the last one year, we've been buying water from Bowser's consistently. Some of us were getting water bills, and now it's um, gone up by almost four times. So, and even the quality of water we're getting from these Bowser's is not good. Mm. But then again, after... The Nairobi governor, Johnson Sakaja, says the county government is battling some of the developers in court. We have around 735 cases pending um, in, our, in our courts. So you find um, there are those who get an approval, 
the approval goes through a technical committee. Um, but once it is done, the actual implementation is different from what was, uh, was, was approved. And of course, we have to follow um, the, the court process. We were, we were, we were arrested and charged um, quite a number. Um, but then you ask, and then what? Sakaja says his county government has already started implementing the 10% greenery policy. Yeah, for every development being brought, there must be green space the, uh, that you uh, provide uh, trees. Um, you must have a place for children to play. There are many, many uh, uh, you know estates and flats where there's no, nothing is green. You know, there's, it's just concrete, concrete, concrete. It's not good for our health. Um, well, even as we say that, we are redesigning many of our roads, and that's why we expect people to, you know, stick to the six meters. The six meters setback means the distance between the actual development and the road left for purposes of road expansion. Um, and we are seeing those which are completely irredeemable then I'm afraid we'll just have to do the tough thing because we, we're looking towards the future. Remember, if we don't sort this out now in Nairobi, five years, it'll just be anarchy. The governor says plans are underway to ensure the supporting infrastructure goes hand in hand with the development above the ground. Um, the laying of trunk sewers, ADB has funded us uh, three billion shillings. The trunk sewers go line in line with the, uh, with the rivers. They are so, so um, Kiricho Ndogo, Kiricho Kubwa, uh, the Nairobi River, and that's just that area. But we have a whole uh, plan of around 20 billion. Even as time runs out for the implementation of the project that will see the underground infrastructure at par with what is above the ground, experts have it that it is time for developers to be allowed to chip in. For instance, you find, um, and I've seen this a lot, and you've seen it in Nairobi, where you've got a road that is not stomached, that is giving access to your plot. How, how can the local authorities allow the developer who wants good access to his plot to actually put in resources towards them? Experts opine that it is unrealistic to expect that these areas remain where they were, with Kileleshwa and Kilimani expected to follow global trends where buildings continue to rise vertically to accommodate the growing human population. Hassan Mugambi, Citizen TV.